Now, I am going to discuss about different aspects of failure modes of the flexural members. We know in case of RCC structure, the failure modes are basically the failure due to bending, due to shear and due to uh, deflection, which is the basically the serviceability criteria. However, in case of steel structure, as the structural sections are mainly hot roll sections, where the um, uh, it is not like a um, rectangular section uh, or like a compact section. Therefore, some other type of failure may also occur. What are the other type of failure? That is the local buckling of the uh, cross section, like local buckling of the wave and failure of the uh, flange because of uh, low thickness compared to its width. Also, lateral torsional buckling also uh, come into picture. So, such type of failures uh, may arise in case of steel structure. Therefore, when we are going to design a, a flexural member with respect to steel, we have to consider not only the bending, shear or deflection, we have to consider other sort of failures and design criteria has to be satisfied from those points of view, so that the local failure may be restricted. So, first let us come to what are the type of failures we come across. First is the um, excessive bending um, triggering collapse, because uh, we see that when the excess when uh, we see the if the load is quite high or uh, the defle uh, or the uh, uh, length is quite high then the bending moment will be maximum means will be huge at mid span in general however it may differ considering the support condition and loading condition as well so because of the excessive bending moment uh, the collapse may occur due to bending. So, this is happening in case of RCC structure also it happens it looks like this say the bending failure will come into picture uh, and this is the basic failure mode and in this case the beam is prevented from local um, uh, from uh, lateral buckling and the component elements are least compact. So, that they do not buckle locally. So, um, uh, such stocky beams will collapse due to plastic hinge formation. This is one type of failure which is called category 1. Then another type of failure will come into picture which is called uh, lateral torsional buckling which is an important uh, uh, failure criteria for uh, steel uh, for steel uh, flexural member. So, lateral torsional buckling comes into picture when the beam is quite long. Uh, say for example, if an I section uh, with having long length, then it fails due to lateral torsional buckling. So, here if load is acting in this and support conditions are there, then it may buckle laterally and this lateral buckling occurs due to combination of lateral deflection and twist. The, the proportion of the beam support conditions and the uh, load applied on it are the certain factors which affect on the failure due to lateral torsion buckling. Say for example, uh, uh, if the load is not concentric means along its uh, um, along its width then uh, certain in some cases uh, means the twisting may come into picture because of the torsion torsional moment across the section and because of that lateral torsion buckling will come into picture next another is the local buckling which is uh, in category 3 that is failure by uh, local buckling. Here failure means flange in compression means flange may 
fell due to compression, wave due to shear and wave under compression. These are the certain mode of failure which come into this category. Say for example, if we have a box section, then uh, it may fail in its flange. So, this box section now, uh, so uh, unlikely the um, hot roll section, which are generally stocky, uh, fabricated box sections may require flange stiffening to prevent premature collapse. So, it may fail due to uh, compression of the flange. So, maybe we need flange stiffening to arrest such type of failure. Uh, also, it fails due to uh, wave, wave due to shear and also uh, wave under compression also it may fail. Uh, wave under compression means says for example, if we have a member under concentrated load, then such type of members may fail uh, at this point, means at the point of application of concentrated load, if the load is heavy because load cannot disperse uh, uh, throughout its section. So, therefore, the failure may uh, come into picture due to uh, compression due to concentrated load and this can be uh, overcome by the use of additional bearing plate which will disperse the load. Additional bearing plate we can provide here and through that we can disperse the load and we can uh, overcome the such type of failure. Another failure is category 4, which are mainly the shear yield of wave. So, this is one, then local crushing of wave and buckling of thin flange. So, local crushing of wave means uh, if we have a um, section and if it is under concentrated load, then it may fail due to local crushing like this. So, this may fail like this because of crushing of the wave, this is called crushing of wave and another is buckling of thin flange. Say sometimes the flange width is quite high compared to its thickness. So, therefore, uh, it may buckle due to uh, the uh, very thin flange width, say for example, like this. Say, if flange width is very thin compared to its um, thickness, uh, compared to its width, then such type of buckling may come into picture, which is called buckling of thin flange. buckling of thin flange. So, this is also um, means this type of failure may also happen. However, this type of failure may overcome if we use additional plate at the flange by welding. Uh, so, that the B by T ratio means width to thickness ratio can be increased. Therefore, means and thus we can avoid the flange buckling failure. So, this is one type of buckling failure which can be also avoided by the use of additional plate. Now, what is the most suitable section? Most suitable suitable section for beam. Most suitable section for this we have to see certain things. We have to know what is the stress diagram along the cross section. Say for example, if we see a rectangular section, then we know initially it fails means its stress develops like this. This is called bending stress F B and if the load is going to increase, then after certain period the bending stress will reach to its yield stress. 
So, maximum stress which is called yield stress it will reach up to that. So, after further um, increase of the load it will start formation of plastic hinge. So, so plasticity will develop. So, the sections will undergoes under plastic deformation right. So, here we will see that after development of yield stress F y it is developing across the uh, depth of the section and after certain time it will develop fully plastic right fully plasticity will be developed. So, uh, basically plastic moment is uh, the moment which will carry means which will produce the full plasticity in member cross section and create the plastic hinge. So, this is how we can calculate the plastic moment as well. Now, we know sigma the stress develop is m by i into m by i into y right. So, if we can increase the i value then the development of stress at the extreme fiber can be reduced. So, if uh, from the experiment we can see that if a i section like sections are provided then compared to its cross sectional area or requirement of material its moment of inertia is quite high. Therefore, with light weight we can achieve high amount of moment of inertia and as a result we can reduce a major amount of stress. As a result uh, if we con if we see different type of section we will see that if we consider I section then it will be the most suitable section because of the I value the moment of inertia value is high compared to its weight or the cross section area. Now, another thing that in case of I section it is symmetry in nature means I x x I y y can consider and it is symmetric in nature, but if we use channel section or angle angle section then uh, unsymmetric bending will come into picture for which we have to again consider the uh, stress how it is developing because of unsymmetrical bending. So, means in fact in earlier lecture we have shown that uh, why the channel sections and I uh, and angle sections are not suitable in in uh, in most of the cases and in case of high load or large length we have seen that if we use I section then because of the increased amount of moment of inertia we can reduce the deflection as well as you can reduce the stress due to bending. Therefore, we generally choose I section most preferably. Now, coming to conventional use of various section, uh, we know that we generally use channel or angle section in case of Perlin. Generally, Perlin's are taking light load. So, load is coming less. So, for such type of member, uh, we use either angle section or channel section. And as I told, for high load, I sections are preferred. And in case of Linton, generally uh, double angle, double angle means in this way we provide this is one angle, this is another angle we provide double angle T sections or sometimes also ISJB sections are used. And for large spans and light loads means where the deflection may come huge. So, for that we have to increase the I value. So, to increase the I value we have seen earlier that castellated beam if we use we can increase the I value because depth is going to increase without increasing the material amount. So, for light loads and large span uh, one can use the castellated beam which will be economic. And these are few criteria 
to select a beam section the first is the usual method of selecting a beam section is by using a modulus section modulus z z means i by y right because we know m by z is equal to the sigma so uh, the main criteria should be the section modulus and the criteria of economy is weight rather than section modulus because sometimes uh, we can see uh, if the section modulus uh, is high uh, means uh, weight may be less also or may be high also so uh, but uh, if we consider the economy consideration point of view then we will choose the lighter weight however that may not be achieved always therefore we have to see the section modulus that section whether section modulus is also high or not that means lighter weight and high section modulus will be the preferable one and sometimes deflections and occasional shear may be the necessary criteria for selection of section this is very rare uh, when we have to consider the deflection criteria where deflection is quite high and we have to arrange the deflection and for such type of things we may have to go for castellated beams and sometimes shear may be the uh, guiding criteria so for that also we have to consider uh, corresponding section and it is desirable to choose a light beam furnishing the required modulus of section what i is telling that always we will try to choose a light beam section and uh, which will have required section modulus so if we have a similar section modulus of different kind of section then among those we will try to find out the lighter one and primarily design criteria will be based on these three criteria that is one is the based on deflection based on stress due to bending and due to shear and in case of rc structure we have seen that these are the three major criteria for which uh, the beam is desi designed and in case of steel design also the primary criteria will be these three one is deflection another is stress due to bending another is shear however other criteria has to be fulfilled like the torsional buckling local buckling then the um, uh, uh, wave buckling uh, flange buckling so those things will also has to be taken care right then wave crippling also will come into picture which uh, has to be overcome through uh, the pro uh, by providing certain measure means certain measure means maybe bearing plate we have to provide or we have to take certain measurement so that the wave crippling can be avoided right now deflection when coming to deflection criteria uh, the maximum deflection we know depends on span the span length what is the span length then moment of inertia of the section and then the load means load and lo load distribution and modulus of elasticity and support condition so these are the five factors on which the maximum deflection depends so depending on that we will try to find out what is the maximum deflection coming onto the on onto the uh, member and what is the limiting deflection depending on those we have to decide the section size so in general the maximum deflection can be written as like this the delta is equal to k into w l cube by e i where w is the total load on the span and l is the effective span length e is the modulus of elasticity i is the moment of inertia of the section and k is a coefficient which depends upon the distribution of loading and end support so k varies for different end supports and loading condition so uh, we can find out the maximum deflection depending on this uh, support condition and the loading criteria according to that we can find out the maximum deflection and we have to check whether it is exceeding the limiting deflection or not say for example we can see here that if a simply supported beam carrying a udl load then the maximum deflection we can find out at 5 by 384 w l cube by ei okay so k value the coefficient k k w l cube by ei 
k value will be 5 by 384. So, in case of simply supported beam carrying UDL load, we can find out the maximum coefficient for deflection is 5 by 384. Similarly, we will see very quickly some I mean the coefficient of maximum deflection for some other cases say for cantilever beam having UDL load k value will be 1 by 8. Similarly, uh, for simply supported beam having concentrated load at the midpoint. In such cases, the coefficient of maximum deflection will be 1 by 48. Say cantilever beam having concentrated load at the end, coefficient of maximum deflection will be 1 by 3. If we have a beam loading with two, uh, two concentrated load at a distance of L by 3, L by 3, then the coefficient of maximum deflection can be 23 by 384. So, either we have to remember this coefficient or we have to evaluate this, right. Say for example, in this case, uh, when a continuous beam means uh, fixed fixed beam having uh, UDL load, then the maximum deflection coefficient will be 1 by 384, right. Similarly, if we go to next case, beam uh, having 3 concentrated load at a L by 4 distance, then coefficient of maximum deflection will be 19 by 384. Then, if it is a triangular load, then the coefficient will be 7 by 1920 and if it is a um, uh, fixed fixed beam having concentrated load at the mid span then it will be 1 by 192. Similarly, uh, if a simply supported, supported beam having a load at a distance of A from one side then its coefficient of maximum deflection can be written in this form a by 9 root 3 l into 1 minus a square by l square all to the power 3 by 2 where this is a right. So, so for such type of loading we can generalize the value of maximum deflection coefficient as a by 9 root 3 l into 1 minus a square by l square whole to the power 3 by 2. Now, limiting deflection. So, limiting deflection can be found from the IS code. From few slides what we have seen, I could show that uh, what is the maximum deflection coming for different loading conditions and different support conditions. So, maximum deflection we can find out and we can find out the limiting deflection from table 6 of IS 800 2007 table 6 uh, and the maximum deflection should not exceed the limiting deflection which are given in table 6 of IS 800 2007. Here you will find out the uh, different uh, type of deflection coefficient has been told for different criteria right. Say for example, if it is under dead load live load what will be the maximum uh, deflection criteria means what will be the maximum uh, deflection limit. Uh, so, those, th those are given in the table 6 from which we can find out and effective length for lateral torsion buckling can be found from table 15 effective length for lateral torsion buckling will be required for calculation of uh, design bending moment right. So, for that the effective length L L T for lateral buckling uh, we can calculate uh, as given in table 15. So, few of them just I am showing here in which are given in table 15 and in clause 8.3.1 also uh, it is discussed. So, for example, if the support condition is like this that compression flange at the ends unrestrained against lateral bending that means free to rotate in plan. 
So, for such cases effective length will be k into L right and compression flange partially restrained against lateral bending that will be 0.85 L and compression flange uh, fully restrained against lateral bending the uh, effective length will be 0.7 L. So, this is how the effective length can be calculated uh, which are given in table 15 for different support conditions the value of effective length are given either L or 0.5 L or 0.7 L. So, in today's lecture uh, the last thing we like to discuss is about the design procedure. So, design procedure can be divided into three parts one is structural another is secondary effect and practical limitations. So, basically the design of the member will be done due to bending moment, due to shear force, due to deflection and due to stability. First is the bending moment. So, first we will see what is the maximum bending moment coming into the member and for that what will be the size of the section, whether it is capable of carrying this much bending moment or not. Then we will check whether the um, developed shear force will be able to carry it by the section. If the design shear force uh, is more than the, um, the external shear force then it is fine otherwise we have to increase the section size to withstand the shear force coming from the load. Then we will see the limited uh, deflection the maximum deflection can be calculated for the given load and the section and we will check whether the maximum deflection is uh, exceeding the limiting deflection. If it is exceeding the limiting deflection then we have to increase the section size and we have to redo all the things otherwise we can go ahead. Another is stability, stability like lateral torsional buckling may come into picture. So, from that point of view also we have to consider whether the structure is safe or not. So, these are the structural aspects which has to be taken care for design. Another is the local buckling. So, local buckling means buckling of the wave, crippling of the wave or the buckling of the flange because of um, thin flange, flange may also buckle. So, these are the some secondary effects which has to be also taken care and we have to check whether it is safe against local buckling against secondary forces or not and also we have to check the connections so that is ok or not. And then we will go to the practical limitations. Practical limitations means we will have to consider the durability, fabrication tolerances and erection strategy. Means erection strategy means we will have to see that the given section which are coming is uh, possible to erect properly or not that we have to see and we have to make a erection strategy so that the given sections can be erected. Uh, properly in the site. So, this is how one can design the uh, section. So, in today's lecture in short if we say that main thing what we have discussed is the uh, failure criteria of the um, member and uh, uh, what are the type of failure may come into picture and because of that failure how to take care uh, means how to take care the design that will be discussed in next class right. So, in today's class basically we have discussed the failure criteria and the um, what is the maximum displacement coming into the section for different loading conditions and boundary conditions, what is the practical limitations of the deflection as per the codal provisions and what is the effective length of the um, uh, uh, effective length of the member due to lateral torsional buckling those have been seen how to calculate through the code and design procedure also uh, has been discussed where uh, we have to consider the structural criteria then the secondary effects and local buckling and then the erection durability etcetera. So, these are few uh, things which we have to keep in mind for designing a flexural member. In next class we will discuss about the design procedure of the flexural member considering all this uh, design failure criteria right.
okay so today's lecture is over uh, okay thank you